So we're just getting into September now, and I think it's pretty obvious that this thing is not going to be done this year because I live up in Canada and our winters start in about October. So I wanted to at least have this running and moving under its own power this year. So I have a couple of fairly big items to check off that list if I want this thing running. So first thing, I need an air conditioning compressor so that I can have my whole belt drive. I can have a water pump running, alternator running, power steering pump running, that kind of thing. So first of all, AC compressor. Then second of all, when you're doing a big project like this, I don't really like to start it without having gauges in it. Now, yes, I have the factory gauges. Yes, they would plug right in. However, nothing's gonna work, right? There's no tachometer in those gauges, so I don't know what I'm running at. The uh, sending units from the old engine are not installed in this one. And the only thing that's really would that really would work would be the voltage gauge, and that's really my the least of my concerns. So, two big things. AC compressor and gauges. So I've been waiting just about a month and a half. I wanna say it's been like five, maybe pushing six weeks since I ordered this stuff. This came from Summit Racing. This was actually in stock, ready to ship. It's a Sandin 508, which is what my dirty dingo brackets were built for with a seven rib serpentine belt pulley on it. And then these are a set of Dakota Digital VHX gauges now the different thing about these is that they're actually a metric set. This is in kilometers an hour, and the temperature is actually in Celsius. So that was kind of the tough part, to try to find a set of gauges that were made in metric, because again, I'm in Canada, I'd like to see my speed in kilometers an hour. Temperature isn't the biggest deal, but speed is the big thing that I wanted. So I found out Dakota Digital does actually make metric gauges. However, they're built when you order them because they're not as popular, they don't have a stock of metric of any of their gauges, I believe. So when you order them, that's when they make them. So that's why this took probably three, maybe four weeks for them to build this set of gauges. And then shipping, of course, was about a week and a half. So now, now I have them. We're getting close to the end of the year, but I'm hoping this will be easy to install. I have a belt in the house I can that should fit. I'm really hoping it fits. The last one didn't, this one should. And then just a little bit of wiring for this. It looks like a lot and it looks really overwhelming, but honestly, it's not that hard. Your sending units each have two, sometimes three wires each. Your sending units are in there. And then you just have your indicator lights and then power ground speedometer. And then those are your outputs to the gauges. So really, I'll show how it's done, but it's not really that hard.
resistance, power, ground, that kind of thing, and start wiring it up. Now keep in mind, I don't have the temperature sender hooked up or the oil pressure sender hooked up. Uh, voltage gauge will work, fuel gauge, tank's empty, so don't really know if the gauge works. But I have it all, other than those, I have it all hooked up. And when we turn the key on, we get power, we get the check engine light like we should. And like I said, voltage gauge is working right now. And then the other three are not. And then when we turn the lights on, you get the backlighting on the gauges and the needles light up. And again, I don't have bulbs in the signal, so that's why those are on. It's it's kind of a messed up circuit right now because nothing's 100% plugged in, but it's looking pretty good. So next thing I'm gonna jump into is putting the Dakota Digital oil pressure and temperature sending units into this engine. They supply a bunch of different adapters uh, with different pipe thread sizes so that you can hopefully use one of those to adapt it to your engine I believe I can use one of those for my temp sensor And then I have a plate that goes on top of the oil filter on the oil pan And then it should have the right size pipe thread to screw in the oil pressure gauge So right after I was done filming that clip I actually realized that I made a mistake so on the square bodies these turn signal indicators aren't actually in the cluster. They're right underneath the speedometer and the tack, which is what these are. There's little bulbs in behind this, and then this is a, a green, green clear piece of plastic. So now I actually rewired it so that it works correctly. So when you turn the lights on, they come on like that. That's where the uh, turn signal indicator should be, not in the dash. So originally when I was wearing this, I had them hooked up to this left, I can focus, left and right terminals because that's what will actually trigger the indicators in the gauge to work. Now, when you buy the gauges, it comes with two of these connectors, just little two pin ground and positive connectors. And if you look at the back of the cluster, there's the two spots. You have the main connector there and then you have a spot there and a spot there. So, simple as that just wired the one side up to power, the other side to ground, and now they work as they should. So now it's time to move into the sending units. So these sending units are supplied by Dakota Digital. These, This one's your water temperature, this one's your oil pressure, and it actually includes a whole bunch of uh, adapters here for either or. And I believe this one is the one that should be used to go into the back passenger side of an LS head where that Allen bolt is. So you put that in, it has a crush washer, and then this goes inside of that. Then you'll have to Teflon this into this fitting. And then this is the oil pressure one. I actually bought this. It's a block that goes right above your oil filter. If you aren't running oil cooler lines, this is where they would go in. Uh, on vehicles that aren't equipped with it, they just have a block off plate. So this will go in place of that, has a rubber O-ring. I have the one port blocked off with an H eighth inch pipe thread plug and then this will go into the other one and then again teflon on that as well 
and then bolt that onto the oil pan and then that should be good for oil pressure. And then it comes with these really nice leads. Uh, this one's for a speedometer. And then uh, that's water temp. This is oil pressure, super long, more than you would really need. So then you'll just plug those in, run them through the firewall, and then plug these into the corresponding spots on that box. So as you saw there, I got the oil pressure sending unit installed as well as that adapter and uh, had a bit of an issue with the coolant temp sensor. So this is that fitting I was talking about that threads into the head. And uh, I'm pretty sure I got a defective one actually. When I started threading this into the block or into the head, it was threading in completely fine, no issues. As soon as the uh, that washer that I had on here, as soon as that made contact with the head, and I put any sort of force on this to tighten it and crush that washer, this snapped right off. And uh, I took an extractor and this wasn't even tight in the head, it just came right out, no problem. So I think there might've been a hairline crack in this or some sort of manufacturing issue with it. So I'll have to get another adapter so that I can run the coolant temp sensor, but that's no big deal. I got the wire ran anyway. And obviously as we come inside, there's not gonna be any difference because not running, no oil pressure, and again, the temperature isn't hooked up, so. So hopefully this video helped if you're trying to install Dakota Digital gauges or really any gauges in a square body. It's, it's quite simple. Some of the wires are in your factory plug for the gauges and then some go to external sending units. But overall, Dakota Digital makes a really good system. It's super easy. It's not quite plug and play, but it's about as close as you're gonna get for something like this. Everything's labeled really well. There's an explanation in the manual for every single pinout that goes into that box. So it's super, super nice to use and it's super easy to wire. So if you're looking for a nice quality set of gauges for your restoration project, definitely check out Dakota Digital. They've got some real nice products for a whole bunch of different vehicles. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. If you like the video, or if you wanna see more content on this K10, be sure to like and subscribe, because we got a whole lot more comments. So with that, we're gonna see you in the next one.